Support the channel on patreon.com slash manlightfoot. Ah, it's a new year. What a way to rein things in by watching the last good animated film of last year, Encanto. I mean it. It's a film that definitely takes things to a different level for Disney. It's unbelievably gorgeous animation that changes the game of facial expressions for 3D animation. It's focus on coming to accept the family you have and not shunting them because they don't offer something of value to the family. It's handling of emotional trauma to a degree not fully seen from Disney, save for Lilo and Stitch, which was focused on, but fairly briefly. Uh, oh wait, I mean, uh, the live action movie's gonna suck? Alrighty then, you also can't ignore the fantastic music, be it the amazing score or the great musical numbers that express everything the characters are going through, and not to mention, they're just catchy as hell. Welcome to the family, Madrigal. The home of the family, oh. Madrigal. and it's all held together perfectly with the main character Maribel. Just a ball of sunshine who obviously isn't perfect, but basically is the glue that holds things together for the family. That unique piece of the family who herself is not unique in their traditional sense. She becomes a standout with her fun and likable personality. She's just a fun pure beanbag that you just obviously want to protect. Like she's just so nice, you just can't hate her. Honestly, all the characters are stand out with their eccentric traits. They're all just great, fun, likable characters who you just really want to hang out with if ever that was a possibility. So why do people believe the family is abusive? I mean, they're definitely worth discussing in terms of their treatment of Maribel, but to say abusive, well, maybe we should take a look into this. So there's been this weird thing going around for people who've watched Encanto thinking Maribel should have abandoned the family all because they find the family abusive. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. It's hard to see why, but okay, I'm honestly gonna drop any niceness and say y'all niggas are insane. Seriously, some people believe she should abandon the family or completely shut them out, which is just honestly weird. Like, come on. It's pretty crazy to think like that considering all the problems with Maribel leaving the family. One, she's still a teenager. Where would she go? She can't just stay with some other people in the Encanto, and she can't leave since there's a bunch of mountains blocking the way out, plus all the implications of, you know, wandering out into the woods where there's random dangers that could probably take her out. Just saying. Two, the family wasn't even that harsh to her to warrant such an extreme. Sure, they weren't the best, but they were nowhere near that bad to the point it would be considered abuse. And three, well, honestly, I didn't have a third point to make, but my other points still stand. But you know what? Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. We should really examine these characters and the situation they're in to really see is the family wrong in how they treat Mirabelle. Spoiler warning, they're not. Let's start off with a look at Maribel. From the movie, we know she's a fun, energetic, and very caring person. This aspect shines through from a great performance by Stephanie Beatrice, who has impeccable range. I'm serious, the woman who gave us this gem? I've only had Arlo for a day and a half, but if anything happened to him, I would kill everyone in this room and then myself. Very violent eulogy, I like it. Also did this. Welcome to the family, Madrigal. The home of the family, Madrigal. Oh, nice pipes. Yeah. She just oozes range. Look, I just appreciate great actresses when I see them, so eat me. Get away! Back on topic. Maribel isn't perfect by all means. She can be a little impulsive in trying to do the right things. And things don't work out too well for her since she isn't given a magical gift like the rest of her family. This creates a bit of tension between her and her family, particularly between her and her abuela. 
She's kind of seen as a black sheep of the family since she can't really help out much with maintaining the house or pushing the family name. The great admirable thing about her is her tenacity to push on and help her family and not let it hold her down. Especially when the magic starts to fade away. She puts her all into making sure things don't go wrong for her family. There's a working theory that she's basically supposed to be the new bridge that holds the family together, taking Abuela's place. It makes sense considering how she keeps tabs on everyone and their powers and even their well-being. Like for example when Maribel is talking to Louisa about the magic and hears how stressed out she is, Maribel puts aside her mission just to comfort her older sister. Aww. Shows she's about putting others before herself. The same thing happens when she makes amends with her sister Isabella. Now at first it was just sort of a means to an end type of deal, but Maribel helps Isabella get through her struggles of having to be perfect all the time. And it is by having an argument with her that inadvertently forces Isabella to create something imperfect. I mean, you can't argue with the results, but still. It further emphasizes that Mirabel is the emotional anchor the family needs. Especially with Abuela worrying too much about the family sticking to traditions just to hold up appearances, rather than making sure her family is okay. It makes sense that Mirabel could take over for Abuela because she's basically picking up the slack. But that does bring us to the main crux of things with how the family treats Mirabel. You don't know how long I've been waiting to finally use that song. Like, I genuinely was struggling to find any placement for that song last year. But anyway, now we come to the center of things, the Family Madrigal. A very energetic and delightful group who can have some... Shall we say shortcomings? They're a different type of family that we've seen in animation. They try to be supportive of each other, but clearly don't want to break tradition and disappoint the head of the house. That being Abuela Alma. Alma is the one that magic revealed itself to when she and her husband were fleeing from their hometown being destroyed by raiders. Her husband sacrificed himself to help protect her and their newborn kids, causing the magic to help in creating the Encanto. Alma made it her mission to keep the magic strong for generations to come. Now a big thing about this is that this past trauma caused major tension in the family once Mirabel was born and later didn't receive a gift. It made Alma fear that her family was in trouble and tried too hard to protect her family at the cost of neglecting Mirabel and even her own son Bruno who was one of her kids she was even trying to save like Jesus. Now for some they found Alma to be too harsh in her treatment of Mirabel and Bruno but I'm gonna say something a little controversial here. I can see why Alma was neglectful. But that doesn't mean I agree with her. Just making that clear. You know what? Let me explain. Alma was clearly grieving with the loss of her husband, so receiving something she perceived as a miracle probably made her eternally grateful to whatever brought the magic on. But the downside was possibly in her grieving state she thought the magic would be taken away if ever something in the family came along and made it seem like they were ungrateful. So she kept up traditions that she felt would keep the miracle happy, but it was at the cost of the next generation's happiness. Basically, Alma didn't handle her grief properly, so it blinded her to what was truly important, and that was just being happy and living a full life with her family as they truly are, not honor bound by some imaginary obligation. But we do need to address the elephant in the room, Alma's treatment of her family, especially Mirabel and Bruno. Since so many people think how Alma acted was apparently unforgivable, but it really, really wasn't that bad. The family was clearly under a bit of stress with trying to keep up appearances. I hate you. Oh, I'm a loser. Okay, okay, a lot of stress. Damn, you pedantic people. But the stress they were feeling wasn't anything too substantial. It was more a case that if they all got together and talked to Alma and voiced their concerns, things probably would have turned out better for them. The magic they had seemed to support them just enjoying life how they wanted rather than keeping to traditions and appearances. Hell, you could see it in how it was pushing Maribel to make amends with Isabella. Now with Maribel and Bruno, it's a bit tricky with them since they kind of got outcasted. But there's kind of a bit of nuances to this that some people have kind of ignored, honestly. 
With Mirabelle, it was more just a bit of neglect on her abuela's part, which Alma did recognize by the end she was wrong for. But I won't fake the leaving her out of the group pick in the beginning was a bit harsh. But it's not irredeemable. With Bruno, he quote unquote left on his own just to focus on fixing the house. He wasn't really told to leave. Sure, people were upset with him on his predictions, but they probably weren't going to tell him you need to disappear or anything like that. Now, what type of person would that make anyone? Nah, nah. But I'm sure if Bruno discussed it with his family, especially his mom, things would have turned out differently. So actually having a dialogue would have probably worked out for them. But you know old people can be stubborn on things, especially with Alma still needing to learn to move on from the past. Now that's the real meat and potatoes of things. Alma needed to get through her own internal struggles. people being upset with Alma is that we're kind of in an age of no redemption. Basically too many people, particularly young folks, don't believe in the idea of the second chance and honestly it's pretty unfair. Now far be it from me to say who's worthy of redemption and who's not. It depends on your own experience with someone, but with this movie I think we can be a little kind to Alma on this. The point for her was learning to get out of the past and let her family live happily rather than to some fake sense of duty. But for some, they think she needs to be casted aside for her transgressions like she caused physical harm or caused the nuclear war or brought a plague onto people's houses or some shit. Some even think this applies to the rest of the family with how they treated Maribel when really the rest of the family was just dismissive, save for her parents who treated her very well and were very kind to Maribel, which may not be good for a child or developing teenager in terms of the dismissiveness, but it's not that bad since they made the corrections. Maribel was still seen as part of the family, it's just everyone kind of put focus on their own things that Mirabel ended up getting lost in the shuffle of their own stress. They're nowhere near horrible monsters like Matilda's family or the Willoughby's or hell even these sets of freaks. People honestly need to stop trauma relating. This is basically a term I'm using to describe people who correlate their own problems with others and get mad when that person's response is not the same as what they would do. In other words, you're being a jackass because you think everyone should act and think like you. Newsflash, we all have different experiences and make different choices that we feel are right. And plus, the choices y'all would have made here if you were in Maribel's shoes would have been looked at as extreme and you would have been seen as the bad guys in that situation. It's never right to judge something or someone on how you would have handled the situation. Some people's upbringings are rough, but it makes no sense to think all upbringings are the same. For some of you, shutting out people is most likely your best option. I'm not going to deny there are some families that are just worth leaving behind. That's just the sad reality of it. But for others, the situation isn't that dire. We're all individuals who gotta make the calls for ourselves in these types of situations. You can only live your own life. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Look, at the end of the day, Encanto is a great piece of art that teaches about holding on to the past. It's about not letting your past hurt your future or get in the way of connecting with your family or putting unnecessary expectations on your loved ones for some arbitrary reason, like marrying for the sake of keeping the family going, being strong all the time and not letting an ounce of weakness or vulnerability come through, or hiding the truth to spare the family. Abuela Alma isn't some monster who should be abandoned and forgotten. She was just someone who was misguided by her grief and learned her lesson in the end and is working to correct her mistake. The greater message that I feel some didn't focus on was how you don't need to bring something unique to the table just to belong to your family. It's okay just to be in the family, which is something that many of us ended up finding a hard time to understand. Just being the best of yourself is all that should matter to your family. Besides, people should be more worried about the actual problem of Maribel being a replacement for Alma as the new head. I mean, it makes sense. The fact that she connects with everyone else and can turn them against Alma, her not having a gift, the obvious reason is she is the gift. The gift to the family so they won't have to deal with Alma anymore. Oh my god. 
How have we not seen this before? She was biding her time until she could finally act out her evil plans to take over as the head of the household. That's why she got the doorknob at the end. That's her house now. She can lock those motherfuckers outside. She's not some sweet innocent teenager. She's a demon. She's going to take over the Encanto. It all makes sense. Maribel is the devil. Maribel is the devil. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Leave a like and make sweet love to that subscribe button. And always remember, it's just a thought.